the human nature of having interest rates that low from that long and the reciprocity of shooting rates up the fastest pace in history. If you look at it on a log normal basis, it is on a global basis, all these central banks. It's just, I think it's irrational to not expect normal reciprocity in markets and in what's happened with what people have done um, during that low interest rate period. So that's why I'm looking for one of the most significant economic resets of a lifetime based on normal cycles. And that to me is a key part of it. According to Bloomberg Intelligence's senior commodities analyst, Mike McGlone, risk assets would be negatively affected if the U.S. defaults on its debt. However, McGlone believes that once an agreement on raising the U.S. debt ceiling is reached, risk assets are likely to rally. He suggests that the market's reaction to a potential debt default would likely compel the raising of the debt ceiling. The recent regional banking crisis and failures in March have raised concerns about economic growth, leading to small losses in most commodity indexes. The UBS Constant Maturity Commodity Index fell by 0.69%, while the Bloomberg Commodity Index fell by 0.75% in April. Industrial metals were particularly weak during the month, experiencing a decline of over 3%. The banking failures have investors worried about a credit crunch, which could result in a weaker economy and reduced demand for industrial metals. Zinc and copper, in particular, fell by around 8%, contributing to the overall sector losses. In the video, McGlone provides a macro outlook on various factors such as the job market, interest rates, deflation, and the inevitable reality of a recession. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. My base case is we will go down that 20% in the equities regardless of the, of this, uh, the oxymoron of default in the U.S. government. That should never be something to be said. Maybe it'll be a delayed payment. Um, but it, it'll all be worked out um, and everybody will get their U.S. dollars. Um, let me print more. But um, we are seriously tilting towards a recession. The Federal Reserve is still tightening and the job winding out of the Fed governors is significant. You cannot, you know, don't fight the Fed has been one of my ma main mantras for well over a year. And it still is that the key dichotomy you see is Fed fund futures price for from now, right now to the end of the year, about 70 basis points of cuts. And virtually every economist are Chief Economist Anna Wong, our Chief Strategist Ira Jersey, and um, most of the Fed governors said we're not going to be cutting rates. Saying that, that means there's only one way for that really to happen, for the futures market to be right, and that is for the stock market to go down and make it happen, unfortunately, which might be led by Bitcoin. So the situation we're in right now, I see, is mostly risk, lose, lose for risk assets. And you're seeing that in commodities. There's significant deflationary forces showing up in commodities. So I look at the, the, the politics are all part of it. To me, it's it's the most overwhelming macro is that it's May. We just had a Fed hike. We've had two Fed hikes despite this banking crisis. And this is the kind of thing I think we're going to look back from the future and say, okay, well, we probably should never do that again because what resulted was a significant depression, maybe recession. It's a key thing. Now, I say that. I don't like to say it as Mick Gloom has been my nickname I've earned, but just point out the facts of liquidity and history, which I love getting on your program. We've never had a pump in liquidity like we've had um, up to that peak of money supply around 26% in 22, down negative now. Never had that. And we've never had the dump like we've had now in terms of not only just money supply, but you're seeing it in, in, um, in bank deposits re receiving. And just the lessons of history say we should expect some form of reciprocity in economic activity. Not complicated at all. So that means in the stock market, maybe just a normal 50% peak to trial um, correction. We've had that in the last two recessions. The key thing is in the leading markets, it's already happening, Mike. Like if I look at the most significant measure of uh, heat, electricity, and um, fertilizer in this country, natural gas has dropped to the same price as 1990. Significant deflationary forces. The Bloomberg Commodity Index is down 24% on a one-year basis. Copper has just broken down to down in the air, pumped 12%. There's still these little things. So I look at politics and everything. Yeah, the debt price is a pretty significant tree. But the forest is that we are tilting down towards a severe recession. Hasn't even started. And all the indications are right now, key question I'll leave you with is there's nothing I see on the radar at a close that what can stop this downward trajectory at the moment. After experiencing decades of near-zero interest rates, many bankers have eagerly awaited the opportunity to benefit from higher policy rates, allowing them to charge more and increase their profits 
from daily lending activities. However, now that the U.S. Federal Reserve and the Bank of England have raised rates to levels not witnessed since the 2008 financial crisis, bank executives are realizing that with the rise in rates comes a greater necessity to carefully manage interest rate risk. To me, um, the base case from a year from now is we will be in severe deflationary situation. And it's already happening. Come on, as I pointed out, it's happening in yields, already pointing that out. It's happening in virtually every indicator I look at. You look at, here's, here's one key fact. The producer price index around 2% now, last year's peak was 18 or so, is dropping at the fastest pace in history. And that goes back to 1948. Now that's got a two beta to CPI. Typically it, it runs ahead of it. If CPI is running 5%, PPI is usually 10%. It's a two beta. It's going to be negative. When we print the June number on July 13th, and it'll probably, it might have close might somewhat mimic the lowest level ever, which was from July 2008 at minus, I'm sorry, 2009 at 6.9% because it's the measure. Crude oil peaked the year before and it, it bottomed that uh, during the measuring period. And it's just what happened. The Bloomberg Quad Index in, in crude oil peaked in June of 2020 of last year. When we measure PPI for June of this year, it'll be from the absolute peak. It'll be a negative number. If not, it'll be heading towards severely negative. So that's significant deflation. So let's take PPI minus Fed funds. It's negative. It's around almost, it's negative like 2.5%. That's seriously contractory and contraction and recessionary. So here's the way I look at it. Those, all my indicators, everything I look at are showing towards severe deflation. I can point out, like I mentioned, commodities are down 24% on an annual basis. Copper is just broken down in the year. It was up in the year. Uh, the, the Fed, it, Bank, we have a crisis, bank crisis. We had money supply contracting. Number one thing that Ben Bernanke pointed out um, when he wrote his essays on the Great Depression, there's one key measure that's on the cliff's edge for deflation. That's the stock. So I think what's going to happen, risks of predictions, is the S&P 500 is right around four bit. I look at it as 4,000 bit. It's just going to go four offer and go down to three. Now, I say that I use these signals because I remember that in the trading bits. You'd see markets trading one, you know, one, two, one, two. Gold just was offered at two for years and it just went two bid. And I think it's going to end up going three bid. I just see that happening with the fundamentals. The stock market, now the S&P 500 has been hovering around this four level. It's four bid. And a lot of indications are saying it should go four off. And once it does, I think it drops to three. And a normal recession, that that is your, Basically, on a one to 10 scale, that is everything kicking in at a 10 for severe enduring deflation. Here's one key fact I'll end with is the Federal Reserve will just never ease with the ease they have in the past because of the lessons they learned from easing too much and inflation that resulted. The hazards became evident when banks experienced significant losses in their securities portfolios, particularly in government securities. While government securities are typically regarded as extremely safe assets, those acquired during periods of low interest rates started losing value as rates began to increase in the United States. These losses expanded from a mere $8 billion at the conclusion of 2021 to over $620 billion by the conclusion of 2022 for lenders covered by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And we haven't even started this recession. So I think that's a, an unlikely scenario without significant Fed easing. And that's what's changed. So I like to point out what's different from a lot of people who say, oh, okay, once the Fed's done tightening the stock market to do well, I remember that cycle in 1994, but it can't, it, it has to, you have to remember from whence we, from where we came. We were just so expensive, the U.S. stock market. So I look at it as I used to, you know, I was in the trading pits in the 80s. I remember um, the Nikkei peaked in 90. It still hasn't got above that level, the Nikkei 225. You look at the Euro stocks index in Europe, I think it's the same price from 23 years ago, something like that. I could look at it in a second. So to me, that's the key thing. And, and that's why I wrote in um, what's happening in um, treasuries. I look at it, this is also cyclical and it's um, part of what's happening with um, demographics. Every boomer in this planet, when they saw that two you note know, go to 5%, they said, thank you. I and mean, if they did it, then they weren't advised though. And what happened, yeah. that was in March. And what's happened since then? So now it's offered at four at the moment. It's right around four yield. That's at four yield. I think it's going to go offered at three, partly because we all realize, okay, we've had a great run. Time to check in and say, thank you very much. And everything's tilting. I think we'd have to not get that recession. That's the highest probability since 1982 at the, when you look at the yield curve. So here's another key factor. Look at unemployment. 
what, 3.2%, the lowest in how many years, decades, 60 years or so. Yeah. There's never been a case of unemployment. And it's the state of goal of the Fed for unemployment to go higher. It's never been a case of unemployment trowling from such a low level without a severe recession or a lot, at least a recession. And then I look at things like, why is the price of natural gas, the most significant measure of heat, electricity, and, and fertilizer in this country, dropped 80% and down to the same price as 1990? Why is copper giving it back all its gains? Those are ind indications on a global basis of a lack of demand pull. And what normally happens to commodities, humans create more of it for less. So I, I think good luck with that one. Sometimes people like that might not say exactly what their positions reflect for different reasons. You got to be careful with that. But I look at it, I'll end with this. I'm completely worried that crypto's the fastest horse in the race on the way down last year. And everything has been up this year. Like I said, copper's given back that, that up. Cryptos are starting to give that back up. will be one of the first indicators of everything starting to tilt back downward. And what's the state of goal of the Fed? Keep rates higher until they can reduce the ability for people to buy stuff. It's not what they said, but it's kind of my interpretation. It's also what Jim Bianco has said. The Central Bank of Argentina has recently increased its key interest rate by 6 percentage points to 97% in an attempt to address the surging inflation, which has reached a three-decade high. Inflation has become a significant challenge for central banks worldwide, but Argentina is particularly affected, with its annual inflation rate surpassing 100% last month, the highest level since the early 1990s. Currently, only Venezuela and Zimbabwe have higher inflation rates than Argentina, according to data from the International Monetary Fund. In contrast, inflation remains below 5% in the United States, where the central bank has raised key interest rates by 5 percentage points over a span of 14 months. The central bank of Argentina also hopes that the rate hike will encourage investments in the country's currency. Due to the persistently high inflation, there has been a significant outflow of investments held in the Argentine peso, resulting in a 23% decline in its value against the U.S. dollar this year. With a presidential election scheduled for October, Economy Minister Sergio Massa is focused on preventing further devaluation of the currency and containing inflation. His success is likely to be closely tied to the outcome of the government's efforts to combat inflation. However, analysts believe that the interest rate hike is unlikely to bring about substantial changes in the Argentine markets. There is a sentiment that the government is struggling to effectively address inflation. Miguel Cagle, a financial advisor and former deputy manager at the Central Bank of Argentina, expressed concern that the government's actions have come too late. He noted that interest rate hikes, although a primary strategy to combat inflation, take time to yield results, and the time frame is not effective given Argentina's current situation. The video also raises the question of whether the upcoming elections in the United States have a role to play in the disappointing global economic outlook. Do share your thoughts in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.